Well, Tony, is this uh, Satanism like Geraldo Rivera talks about, or what? <laughs> well, Eugene, if it's all boiled down, I think it's or what. You see, if you really look up the word, or research the word bizarre, in, in French, it means angry. In Spanish, it means bold. And the Basques, that just means you have a beard. So obviously, it's just an angry old man that has a beard that is uh, willing to do this sort of shtick. You're not looking at me when you say that, are you? <laughs> I hope you're not looking at me. <laughs> when did you first get interested in bizarre? Not, not simply bizarre as, a, as an art form, but bizarre as a, as a way of performing magic tricks. Well, Eugene, it's always been in the back of my mind, even back in 1932. Uh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> not really. <laughs> For you, perhaps. But, no. Uh, I've been a subscriber to uh, Weird Tales magazines from day one, practically, and I always wanted to uh, attach the, the, the deceits of magic to the thinking of some of these very fine pulp writers of uh, fantasy, because to me that has always been the real type of magic that made people doubt reality rather than just figure that it was a, a form of entertainment. Doubt their construction of reality. Yes, yes, definitely. Now, I have some uh, questions for you, <laughs> and uh, I've cleverly written them down on cards. I was afraid you had. Yes. <laughs> Charles Cameron, a good mm -hmm. friend of yours, has written, Dear friend, quote, the average magician has long since given up dread. What he requires is a sound Gothic revival. And then Charles goes on to say, quote, either you are a magician with magical powers or you are not. It is as basic as that, unquote. Would you comment? Uh, I cannot take a exception with his words, Eugene. I agree with the last. Either you are a magician or you're an entertainer. Uh, there are many people who tap dance and sing at the same time, you know. And I don't mean to put uh, contemporary comedic magicians down, having been one for a number of years. Uh, I was an entertainer. I was not a magician. I was presenting puzzles, but either you are a magician or you are not. In writing about the ramifications of uh, this approach to conjuring, our friend Stephen Minch has written that the first tool to breaking down the walls of skepticism in an audience for bizarre magic is a naturally serious attitude on the part of the performer. Uh, yes, I agree, and I, uh, I have been quoted as saying if you're going to be a mage or a magician, you have to do it 36 hours a day. You must play the part all the way. However, I do take exception in that I believe that there is an area of, available for black humor, uh, for a moment of comedy relief in order to accentuate uh, greater suspense in the effect. Um, See, maybe I, I'm contradicting myself. Well, I would probably, <laughs> I would probably use the word sincerity yes. more than the word serious, because serious seems to suggest that there is no humor at all. Well, there can be. Well, there can be. Whereas sincerity, there can be humor, and still the proceedings can be sincere. No, uh, when I'm doing the, uh, the Jewels of Hawthorne, the thing, when I stick the needle through my arm to get the blood, I say I have plenty more in that vein. Uh, to me, that is uh, quasi-humorous, and it does get a, you know, a small titter out of the audience. But uh, uh, I agree with you. Not serious, uh, just sincerity.
you said in uh, the talk that we uh, did at Spirit Theater that as the size of the audience increases, the effect of bizarre magic decreases. As I recall, you said that if you're presenting this for one or two people, they can really be blown away. But when it gets to be 30 people, it turns into a show, and the impact is, of necessity, lessened. Uh, do you still I'm choking on my own word. <laughs> <laughs> That's perhaps well we all should at some time. <laughs> uh, I cannot take those words back. Uh, I have turned down recently. Um, quite a few shows because uh, I felt the audience was just too large. You see, it is not the, the, the theater in which you do it, it's the people that create the proscenium arch. Okay. And the more people that are there, uh, the more disbelief uh, there is. And yes, a bazaar is, is really scheduled for the two or three or ten or twelve or 13. The classic seance number mm -hmm. and below. Uh, well, I take it up to 20 on occasion uh, on Sweet 16 parties, but uh, beyond that, then you become an entertainer. Uh, under that, you are the master of the rights. Okay. It, it's, it's a very iffy thing, and even I cannot draw the line. But I won't do a large, uh, a large audience show because uh, I open myself to too many avenues of uh, ratiocination and disbelief. And disbelief. Okay, doing bizarre magic requires real theatrical skills, and um, that when we look at what magicians are interested in, it doesn't seem that many of them are interested in developing theatrical skills, and if that's true, it doesn't seem like many of them would ever be able to perform bizarre magic. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're right and you're wrong. Okay. Um, to do bizarre, you must be very careful not to become histrionic. You're not become too theatrical. You must always be the Van Helsing, the, um, the seeker for the truth, which means that you're going to have to play a very difficult character yourself and convince people of this. Then again, as I agree with you, most magicians don't have enough theatrical skills to be even magicians, much less bizarre. But uh, how can I sum this up? You must be yourself being a seeker of the truth, even though you know it is a fake. OK. Let me ask you this. When you look at the many books that you've written, uh, each of them unusual in that uh, they're handmade, hand put together, hand lettered, uh, borders on the pages hand-drawn. Cheap way out. Perhaps. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work to me. Uh, let me ask you this, though. Of all your books, what are you most proud of? I think Grimoire of the Mages. Not because of the work that I put into it, but of the many friends I had that contributed to it. Mm -hmm. And that was most fulfilling. Okay, let me ask you one last question. If you, let's imagine that there are some uh, young magicians watching this video, uh, and they are finding this interesting, this whole approach to magic. <laughs> uh, would you give them any advice? Mm -hmm. What would the advice be? Find a voice teacher buy a copy of GQ and learn what, how to dress, get your hair styled, take your dramatic lessons, probably drama lessons, and no one really care what trick you did. You <laughs> might be successful. 
Tony, I'd like to thank you for inviting us into your home and for sharing your thoughts with us. As you know, I've always been one of your biggest fans, and as you also know, I've always tried to urge you to be just a little weirder. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eugene. And may I do one thing? Sure. Something's been bothering me all day, right here. I'd read it. But you didn't have that in there. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been dying for it.